are heading back to Quebec. It's about a year later. You can see uh, nothing's changed weather-wise. Puxatani fell, just seen his shadow and said, get the boat ready. Got uh, Corey and Shannon ahead of us, the only session sticker on the back of the trailer there. And we're settling in for about a six hour drive. Uh, more here, six and a half hours, maybe seven with some stops and stuff and fuel, that kind of thing. But pretty excited. This is trip number, uh, ride number four, I guess. That's what we'll probably embark on at some point in time. Are you excited, Drew? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be different. I kind of wish there was some more snow up there, but, you know, what can you do? Um, so, yeah, hopefully we... Uh, Hopefully we're chasing snow and we can actually find some, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Laurier is apparently down to dirt. They haven't had any snow and there's been heavy traffic. And we were supposed to be staying in Mont Laurier and... South the, of Mount Laurier. Yeah, just south. And I have to ride through the village and the, the city of Mount Laurier. And it's a, it's a big pavement run. And we rode it in the sidewalks last year is where you're allowed to ride. and. It was nasty then, and they had snow. Um, this year, not a chance. So we had an opportunity to back out of our Airbnb, and we booked another one in uh, Ferme Nouve or Nouve or Nouveau, and uh, we're uh, we're north of the city, Lac Saint Paul. Everybody says from there north is mint. So we'll see what it's like. They say Devil's Mountain is still good, but Miko's area is is snurt and almost down to dirt so I don't know where we'll venture off this year but I know we're not going to see the covered bridges this year hopefully we'll see the shoots and anything new that we can come up with so we're riding Saturday we're riding Sunday pending no uh, knock on wood pending no um, you know technical issues uh, the sleds both seem to be running right So what are we, uh, where are we at now? Oh, I gotta tie my shoe. We made it. Firm Nuve, which means little barn. I New think barn. Said. New, New barn. barn. And uh, at an Airbnb here, great spot right up. Look at that, look at that. Sun setting right now. We uh, got the truck parked below and we're just Got all the sleds parked up high here. We got Corey and Shannon with us this weekend. And a few other guys that are down the road a bit, but we'll we probably will hook up with them. But yeah, I thought we did a good job cleaning our sleds, but when you look at these two, we did not. Look at this. <laughs> you can you can quite honestly shave in this one. Yeah, you can. I like how he even did the foot where you put your feet is all polished up too. He polished the brake caliper. Yeah. So yeah, so we're ready to go. Go back to riding, it's a free weekend. You need a mirror, stick on mirrors work. Uh, Drew's are, is, is, it's, it's gotta be attached to the sled. It can't be a handy mirror. Um, so you can see we bought the cheapies from Canadian Tire to stick on. My unit's got the Ram tow mirrors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Dodge Ram tow mirrors, because they're affixed, they, they qualify. And that's all you need is your permit and you're good to go. So. All right, here's the drill. If you want to see us on the trails, we need to fuel these ski dudes up with your likes. Hit that like button now and let's top them all up. Ooh, pretty close. You'll get us next time. Snow conditions were spotty coming in and then looking at some of these trails, they're pretty, pretty moldy. I guess that could be the term for it, right? Just, yeah, it's thin. Maybe. It's thin. Uh, but that's why we got all have qual pieces. Well, we got that one. Two units got qual pieces, ice scratchers. Three units, and then this one's got the rail ones. So, and then I got the wheels on mine too, which will help when we're in town. But uh, yeah. 
So we're gonna try and hit Devil's Mountain again. We're gonna try and hit shoots. What are they called? The Windigo. Shoot the Windigo. So that'll be good. That's something we missed last year. But uh, we'll, and we'll see what else we find in our travels. Hopefully, uh, we'll meet some friends along the way. Mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah, so I'll just premise this by saying that uh, this is day two of our ride and uh, yesterday we went north of uh, Ferme Nouve and had an awesome day. Started out early in the morning and as usual thing the uh, the rumor was when we were driving here that oh they're not going to groom this weekend because they don't like the the free ro motor weekend where you know the, per the the permits are downloadable for free for Saturday and Sunday and and like you said there's a there's rumors out every night and there's an app their, their snowmobile app is amazing it shows you what trail was groomed and when that's a sliding scale of uh, the hours that the groomer is out last, so it's pretty incredible. Yeah, so. uh, the, the route that left. Um, at 24 clay to the mountain. Yep. Okay. Let's okay, go. we'll go to the mountain, yep. Um, 
what else? What did we, what did we see yesterday? Uh, you, you saw the people from talk about your relatives from Ottawa. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, Dan and Ken, if you want. No, but that, like that's the thing. It's we we ended up on this. What was it called? Lou Lou Lins or Ray Lins? Lunic. Lunic. Um, uh, this outfitter was a restaurant years ago, way way up at the end of the world, and the, uh, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell service. This guy, he's closed his restaurant a couple of years ago, but he still has sandwiches and gas and things like that. Pretty cool place. And uh, we get there, and some guy yells at Corey. Wait, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> and Corey, and I say, Corey came back, uh, and I say, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, so we, ended up, we ended up, he goes, oh, let me take my helmet off. So anyway, to take the helmet off, and uh, so happened to be Shannon's husband from uh, Kempsville area. room too we have lots of room at the place we're at one thing i will point out when you're booking or looking at airbnb for a snowmobile trip uh, confirm if they've got parking for your trucks and trailers uh, and also the uh how close you are to the trail ah uh, yeah because you can't just go on airbnb if you're cold uh you know filter out
<laughs> it's a cool spot. Like I, uh, we pulled in and there's side by sides and there's snowmobiles everywhere and the uh, dogs running around. We need some new friends and. Side and we find out that there's no lunch served. We, we miss lunch and by like 15 minutes. They only serve lunch till two. Yeah. So that we um, had we had chips, or you could have any beverage of choice. And uh, yeah. So, so I'll add to that. So another another thing leading up to the trip, uh, because the route I planned on the was uh, pretty far remote north. For us, anyways. Um, so what I did is I left. I'm telling you, like if anyone doesn't use Facebook Messenger, it's crazy. Yeah. Around here, like whether you want to know trail tips, local, local clubs, um, outfitters, any, they're all up and running. Um, so I just left a message on there and said, "Hey, I'm looking for a trail tip." They don't, and they only bring in what they need for their staff. Yeah, so, so what they, basically they stop selling lunch to the public so that they can prepare dinner uh, for their guests. And, I mean, you know, we kind of get it because, you know, we go to the sports a lot and, you know, he's the same way, he doesn't have a yeah. lot of staff and, and he just cooks for his guests. And, uh, I mean, he does supply gas, so if anyone needs to know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's not, not a whole lot of food. So uh, that was a big thing. Um, we tried that twice actually uh, during day one. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, um, that's a hundred lakh, and we went to Miko's to go through and stand in Miko's, and it was the same thing. So uh, they stopped, I think, serving food dinner at four, and they were at eight. Yeah, and then we 
even missed gas by two minutes last night as well. So we were behind the eight ball all day, um, but that's, you know, poor planning on our part doesn't fault anyone operating a business up here. I mean, the, uh, you know, we could easily fix that. That's something that we know now we're learning and hopefully, hopefully the people watching this will go, oh, that makes a lot of sense, but, um, yeah, you know. We did, we did get a sneak peek behind the curtain at Nico's uh, as well, going after hours, um, you know, it was dark, they, they had stopped serving and they were getting ready for dinner for their guests again at the lodge and, you know, we were out in the parking lot laughing because, you know, you could see people partying in their cabins and they had the disco lights going and they had tim mini timber sleds running around and the MX, the MXZ 200 with a snow scoop pulling a GT snow racer and he was launching it off of the drifts in the parking lot and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was pretty cool. We walked into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we walked into Miko's and there's a music just blaring and live music and we go in the bar area, like the restaurant area to sit down and there's a guy at the bar with an acoustic guitar, obviously just one of the guests, and he's singing in French, and you know, just <laughs> everybody at the bar was having a hell of a time. Yeah.
Sunday and it's the trails are flat today, right? Like it's today has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And it's crazy because we're doing like a round and round. Yeah. We're heading right now we're heading to Mount San Diablo and to the Windigo, the waterfall. Yeah. So hopefully we can get something maybe at the top of the mountain. Shoots to Windigo 6K. Hey, so you want to do really yeah, do shoots first. Do shoots first. Back up the mountain. Okay. Yeah. Or shoots on the way home, Corey. Well, it doesn't matter. You're going there, right? Well, do you want to go up to the mountain before it gets extremely dark? I don't think oh. it's much lighter. Talking to the outfitters or the, the Airbnb owner, how um, compatible they are with snowmobiling because he was he was great with us. He, him and Corey chatted a lot, even coming up to the stage, sent pictures and snow reports. Oh, yeah. and he was a snowmobiler himself, so it it was nice to 
rent from like-minded people. Looks like the orange arrow is pointing there. I don't think it's there. Yeah. I think it's to the west. Park Regional Park? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's this way. Yeah, I, I can see this way. Uh, oh, this is still, this is still our. Uh, I think our orange goes right over it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's a call for a still mobile. Well, even the shops I was saying yesterday, but the audio didn't come through. That, you know, this is the birthplace of the speeding snowmobile, and the uh, it's evident when you go into shops on the way here, like the one we stopped just inside of town, and there's old vintage Nordic out front, and you know, pulling a trapper sled and. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool um, atmosphere, snowmobile atmosphere. Oh, yeah. But I think that'll wrap up uh, the video. But uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed that. We enjoyed the ride, and it just gives us a little flashback on. You know what we encountered yesterday. We had a lot of fun. We met some fun people, and and uh, you know got back. And technology is always a funny thing. And this is a new camera setup that I'm working on, and I'm struggling with the audio a bit. And uh, Halliburton Forest was dynamite. 
but the, uh, the adapters I'm using are not correct, so we're running into some problems. I'm hoping we have audio today, because um, that might suck if we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I would stop. 